Let's talk some hoops on this Friday. The men's basketball season is fast approaching, and we are going to talk some hoops, preview the upcoming season right here on Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Friday, welcome to another edition of Lockdown Bearcats. It's Friday, October 14th, 2022. We are today by Sling TV. That's what the episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by. Don't miss next week's matchup between the Bearcats and the SMU Mustangs right here on Sling. Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try it today. We is back. We had him on yesterday to talk about the USF football game and look ahead to the second half of the season. But today we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk some hoops because we're about to enter the true grind of covering the Bearcats football and men's basketball programs. The basketball season is fast approaching. Three weeks from Monday is the season opener against Cleveland State. I'm sorry, not against Cleveland State. Chaminade, excuse me, Chaminade is the first game. Cleveland State is the second game. I remember that. Russ Elman, my colleague at All Bearcats and Sports Illustrated, joining me today. And Russ, you have spent some time around the team, as they get ready for their second year under Wes Miller, give me a sense of the expectations that are surrounding this team. Well, you have 18 wins last year. You have an eighth place finish, like we mentioned towards the end of yesterday's show, right here on Locked On Bearcats. Glad to, glad to be back on, double dipping this week, as I love to do. Love getting on here as much as I can. It's been a lot of fun uh, fostering this stuff. Love doing the podcast platform and medium. The expectation after going 18 and 15 last year, I think, is to be a top three seed in the American. That kind of goes without saying. You do not want to have another worst finish in the history of your time in this conference like you did last year. And to me, I would say 23 wins, 22 wins. I think that's the bar that has been laid down. And especially when you think about the fact that this team was probably going to shatter that mark when you looked at their trajectory going into the new year, going into the conference slate. And things started to slowly, precipitously fall off, lose eight of your last 10 games, and really have that defensive intensity completely leave the building whenever they would get out on the floor. So I think the expectation should be 22 to 23 wins and in a top three seeded position going into the AAC tournament. And that would go right along with the Bearcats preseason projection of third in the American Conference, according to the coaches poll, 82 votes. For the Cincinnati Bearcats behind only Memphis at number two and Houston, no shock at number one. Um, David DeJulius, the second, uh, I'm sorry, David DeJulius named to the preseason all-conference second team. Um, but this team, Russ, what really stands out to me is the tra transfers that are on this team. You've got Kalua Zekpi, you've got Landers Nolly, you've got... Um, Rob Ron Finnis, Rob Finnessy from Indiana. So you have several transfers on this team. But which one do you see making the biggest impact on this year's team? I think the cliche and most go-to answer would probably be Landers Nolly. Obviously, the highest scoring average coming into this team among the transfers, kind of the big-name guy. Fans are familiar with him from his time at Memphis. Has played at Virginia Tech. He's a man who's going to have experience in the Maui Invitational that he can help the players with going into that tournament at the end of November. So I think people would usually lean Landers Nolly. But given how important rim protection is and building your defenses in this West Miller system around a big man, I'm going to go with Kalua Zikpe. I think the 6'8", 235-pound senior is getting rave reviews so far. John Newman III was on um, was talking to, the, to us um, on the AAC Media Day today and speaking about how he's just a chiseled, physically imposing presence that has really acclimated well to this system. And to me, given how important Abdul Adu was defensively last year, how much the entire team, especially when they were playing really great defense, relied on his acumen at the hoop, relied on his ability in the middle of the lane to redirect passes and force harder shots further away from the basket. I think Kalu Izikpe, to me, is kind of a fulcrum player for this team that really, with the exit of Abdul Adu, Alex does not have one go-to returning player in that front court that you're thinking, all right, deep breath, when they're out on the floor, 
were at least going to be solid defensively. And in Kalua Zikpe, you're looking to get that out of him in what is expected to be a starting role and a prominent role in this team. I'll tell you what. I mean, when they got these transfers, it really set a tone for me that Wes Miller is going all in. And Wes Miller is trying to bring this program back to where we know it should be. Now, speaking of Wes Miller, um, and we, we hear about it, but what's the atmosphere like at practice under him? Like, what is a Wes Miller practice like if you've been to one with the Cincinnati Bearcats? Well, to, to me, it's very fun. It's a fun atmosphere. It's a high intensity, but not like yelling, screaming. It's a lot of defined commands, a lot of no time wasting. They tape up the floor in a lot of different ways. They, they're All the assistants are spending like five minutes after every practice, it seems, ripping up all the tape that they have for all their different drills. And I think it's just, it's well run. And especially in year two, I can notice, judging on seeing a practice this year so far versus the practices I saw last year, it's just, he has found his rhythm. He's found his kind of, what it's the water has found its level in the West Miller era, I think, in terms of the practice acumen, the practice timing, the cadences, the way that they do go about their program on year two with the staff. So to me, I, I didn't see anything to be alarmed at. It seemed like the guys were having a lot of fun in the one practice I've seen so far this year. Landers Nolly or Chez, as they call him, uh, for his uh, <laughs> named named him the nickname after his middle name. And he he's uh, he's busting a lot of balls out there, just having a lot of fun. I think this is going to be a really close knit group to me, even though they do have, I think, seven of the 15 guys on the roster are transfers or have transferred in their careers. So I, I think this should be an even more fun group than we had last year. Obviously, last year, you're trying to get acclimated with a bunch of new players, a, a new compl- entirely new coaching staff. And this year, you finally have some continuity. And especially for a guy like David DeJulius, Alex, this is going to be the first time in his entire career he's played back-to-back seasons in at the college level with the same head coach. It's just crazy how much turnover a lot of these guys and a lot of college basketball is nowadays. That's crazy thing about John Beeline, Jawan Howard, John Brannon, and now Wes Miller. So, all right, so we'll get into that. Uh, David DeJulius will talk about um, why fans love Wes Miller. Can this team get back to the NCAA tournament and what? Um, the biggest thing has to happen this year for the Bearcats in order to set themselves up for success heading into the Big 12. We'll get into all of that after a word from Underdog Fantasy. That's what this episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by. The easiest place to spice up college football season. Um, it's easy to play. It's available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players across any team, not just the Bearcats, and decide if they will finish higher or lower. One of the easiest fantasy to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Core. Uh, sign up with the promo code locked on. That's one word locked on. Excuse me. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 free. Go to underdog, excuse me, fantasy.com. Sorry. Or find the underdog fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on. Get in on the college football pick 'em action today. Russ Heltman, my colleague at All Bearcast and Sports Illustrated, joining me today. Uh, he's on a time crunch, so uh, whenever you need to go, Russ, just uh, uh, feel free to do so. But until then, we're talking men's basketball previewing the season. It's our All Bearcats preview edition as we get set for the 2022-2023 men's basketball season, the final season in the American. Russ, the Bearcats are headed to, as we've talked about multiple times, the best basketball conference in the country. What's the biggest thing this team has to do this year to be better than last year and to set themselves up for success going into the Big 12? You got to be better on defense, especially down the stretch of the season. This was a team that was basically giving up 100 plus points in defensive efficiency marks for the final 10 games all the way through. You just cannot survive in college basketball, especially in the AAC against teams like Houston, against teams like SMU, if you're going to be giving up high, high point totals and making it really easy to do so. So I think that's obviously the number one thing they have to fix. I think they fix that for the most part this season. I, I see a lot a lot stronger, more willing bodies out there, bigger bodies. I think this is going to be a really, really tall team. I'm interested to see what those numbers look like on KemPom.com once we get uh, into the season a little bit in terms of their overall um, effective height rankings going into the season. And to me, I think that's the biggest thing you got to fix because – Obviously, the shooting is going to come and go with these college basketball players. The, the, the streakiness is going to be there. 
but Wes Miller will attest to this. His mantra and his identity as a coach and his system is defined by strong 100 or not 194 feet defense that you can lean on with a deep, deep bench. So I'm intrigued to see how they fix those defensive issues that plagued them in the back half of the season. A defensive issues that were non-existent really in the first half. They were a top 30, top 40 team in Ken Palm's defensive efficiency metric for most of uh, November, December, most of January. And then the injuries start to hit. The lack of full off-season conditioning programs for a lot of guys start to hit. And then you trail. Um, you start to drag down the stretch. Um, I, I think especially given what this program has prided itself on for 30 years, uh, defense rules. I mean, we know that. Um, let me ask you this. So the non-conference, we touched on it yesterday. The Bearcats could face a Big 12 team if they face Texas Tech uh, in the Maui Invitational. But regardless, what are your what are your thoughts on the non-conference schedule? Because I look at it and I say, outside of Maui, and Xavier, and even that's a stretch. I mean, what's on this non-conference schedule that can help this team should they have some slip-ups in conference play? Well, I think uh, you and I talked about this yesterday. The one road game they have on the schedule, Northern Kentucky, I think that should be a good test. They've been very good in, um, what, what are they, in the Horizon League? Yeah, they're in the Northern Kentucky's in the Horizon League. They've been solid in the Horizon League over the past three, four years. They've built a nice program down there just across the river. So I think that will be a good test should be an interesting crowd there, a mix of NKU and UC fans. But outside of that, it's just a lot of tune-ups, Alex. It's a lot of tune-ups out there on this schedule. You're obviously welcoming Xavier in. You're trying to break that streak of the Musketeers beating you in the Crosstown shootout. And then you're welcoming Miami of Ohio in, which should be a little bit harder of a test. But the entirety, I think, in terms of struggles and learning about yourself and really learning where this team is, heading into the AAC schedule is going to happen in my eyes in Maui against that slate, Ohio state, Arizona, so many high level powered programs that can show you where you truly are among the 350 plus in the nation. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. I mean, that should be a lot of fun uh, out in Hawaii. So I, um, I want to ask you this, is there a sense that this team can get back to the NCAA tournament, um, having not been really in three years. And do you sense they can get back, even with that maybe not so um, good non-conference schedule? I think they can. And I think, honestly, the whatever issues you have with the non-conference schedule, they kind of will get, I think, in terms of the resume for the NCAA tournament, they'll get kind of washed out with the high-level games they're going to play in Maui. So I think overall it's going to be judged as a decent non-conference schedule. You'd anticipate Xavier being ranked, maybe ranked by then. they will be a top 50 team in the country, you would imagine, under Sean Miller in his first season back. So that'll be a good game. And then Northern Kentucky, as I mentioned, has a strong, strong overall Division One team usually each and every year. But to get back to the NCAA tournament, I think – I think that is the expectation. That is the expectation this year. In year two under Wes Miller, he's talked not, I'm not going to say ad nauseum, but he's made a heavy point to emphasize how impactful and how much further along they are this year because of all the offseason programming and training they've been able to go through as a full unit, getting these three transfers in that they added in the last cycle. So I think the expectation is NCAA tournament. If you win 22 to 24 games, and an AAC that I think should be a little bit better this year than it was last year, then that should be enough to at least get you in that 8, 9, 10, 11 range and crack the door open on an NCAA tournament berth. For the first time since 2019, it's the longest streak they've gone, Alex, without an NCAA tournament berth, I believe, in almost 30 years. It's been almost 30-plus years since they've gone this long without making the NCAA tournament. In 2006 through 2010, they never made the tournament either. So there, there, there are some stretches where they have not made it, but hopefully this year they can get back and set themselves up for – a lot of success going to the Big 12. And I think a lot, a big chunk of that, and we've talked about in Wes Miller, but what is outside of recruiting, which he's done a tremendous job of, I mean, look at Jizzle James now all of a sudden, but what is the biggest reason besides recruiting fans should love Wes Miller, uh, Russ? I think he just gets it. To me, he's a guy that's not really arrogant. He's pretty gracious with the media, has been good with me and my time talking to him here and there. And he's a guy that I think 
really knows how to push all the right buttons in today's modern college basketball. He has just enough old school mentality, old school flair, for example, making the players, not making them, but allowing the players to buy their own suits funded by the program and take take their photo day, picture day photos in those suits so that he said, quote, on media day today, Wes Miller wanted to do that because he wants fans to see these players in something other than a uniform because they're more than just what we see on the court in between those 94 feet, he said in particular. So I, it's just the little things like that where, sure, it's a lot about basketball and fans want everything to be about basketball. But these guys are human beings, too. It can't all be about basketball. And I think those little human touches that he can add, for example, like I just mentioned, with the suits and making sure those kids and and those players have a picture to look back on in that kind of facet. It's just little things like that that should make you really proud of not only the trajectory on the floor, but the trajectory off the floor and how Wes Miller is representing the program after, obviously, a tumultuous few years at the head coaching position. Yeah, and I mean, this is, uh, and that's why it's such a breath of fresh air. I mean, when John Cunningham cast that wide net, instead of just going after a former Bearcat or a local tie leg, I mean, he, he scoured the, the country and found Wes Miller from UNC Greensboro, who didn't have any uh, Cincinnati ties, but his basketball acumen is up there with the best. Uh, we'll continue this conversation. Russ and I got to run in a few minutes, but we'll continue this conversation after a word from two of our sponsors. Russ Hellman, my colleague at All Bearcats and Sports Illustrated, joining me today. You can follow him on Twitter at, at Russ Hellman 11. You can also uh, catch his work as a producer and host on WMKV 89.3. Russ, I get the sense um, from you that you think the conference is better this year. Um, does Cincinnati, uh, being picked to finish third, do they have a chance to maybe win this conference regular season or conference tournament? I would be shocked. I think Houston is going to be far and away the best team in this conference in 2022-23. Kelvin Sampton's built an unbelievable program there. They now have multiple five stars coming into the team. Jarace Walker, who was picked as the ACC or AAC uh, preseason freshman of the year, the highest rated recruit in the history of the Houston program, I believe, at least in the 24-7 sports era. So the fact that they have so much talent, Marcus Sasser coming back, Tremont Mark coming back as well. Jamal Sheed last year filled in for Sasser, and he looked like there was really no no losing a step in terms of production at the guard position there. So they're just loaded. Houston is absolutely loaded. I would be shocked if UC came away with one victory against Houston this year. And to me, they are the cream of the crop in the AAC and should probably be, they will probably be a top five team throughout the majority of the season, at least in the top 10. I would be shocked if they fall out. All right. So Houston, we know they're very good, but can the Bearcats get to the conference tournament playing in the American Athletic Conference? Or I'm sorry, the NCAA tournament playing in the American Athletic Conference? I think so. Yeah, I really do think so. I think it's still going to be judged as a top eight conference in the country, I would imagine. Maybe top seven this year, although we'll see how the Atlantic 10 does. I would be kind of shocked if it ends up being top eight or top seven power rated. But given that the conference was down last year. It was a down year for UC. To me, I think with maybe 11, 12 conference wins in this upcoming conference slate and two wins in Maui, they should, given all of the other wins out there on that non-conference schedule, be able to make that muster up somewhere close to 23 to 24 wins, 22 to 24 wins, and get into the dance that way. And obviously you want to be able to pr- perform well and cap off your season on the right foot with a strong showing in the AAC tournament, at least getting to hopefully a conference final matchup against Houston. And in that sense, you'd lo- you'd obviously be the two seed in that scenario. And I think a two seed in the AAC, I would be shocked if there's not two teams taken from the AAC this year. And I think UC has a great chance to be the third if there is a team that vaults them and they are not the second best team during the regular season. We'll find out. All right, Russ, always a pleasure talking to you. A good way to close out the week yesterday. If you have missed our conversation on the USF game and first half of the season on the football side, you can catch that. And today's conversation about men's basketball, looking ahead to the upcoming season that starts November 6th, Monday night against Chaminade. That's a division two school, by the way. And they are the hosts of the Maui Invitational that the Bearcats will be in uh over the over thanksgiving week russ it's always great bearcats by the way we do know they will open that tournament against a 
reigning number one seed in the NCAA tournament. That's Arizona. That should be a fun, fun matchup against Tommy Lloyd and his Wildcats. Russ, thank you as always. It is always great talking to you, and uh, you have a great weekend, and uh, enjoy the the week off from covering a game, and uh, enjoy the Bengals game on Sunday. We wish you were down there. I'm going to be seeing James, our buddy James Rapine, down there, so looking forward to that. Nice. That'll be a lot of fun. You guys enjoy the game. Hopefully bring back a Bengals W, and I'll talk to you all next week. Same time, same place right here on Locked on Bearcats. It was a lot of fun. Same time, same place indeed. Russ Elfman of all Bearcats joining me today. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty with two N's and N-A-T-I. You can also follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore. Email me at Alex3Frank at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out Locked on Bearcats on our YouTube channel. Subscribe there and follow us too to get an alert every time we drop a new episode. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now get more on the Big 12 by making Locked On Big 12 your second listen. Everyday host Josh Neighbors and the local experts of Locked On take you across the conference in 30 minutes. Locked On Big 12, your second listen. That's Locked On Big 12. For Locked On Bearcats, my name is Alex Frank. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be sure to keep making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. Have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday. Based on a viewer's comment, as excuse me, is Evan Prater an antidote for the long scoring stretches? That's a very interesting question that I'll explore on Monday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the Bengals game um, on Sunday in New Orleans. Excuse me, geez. Um, let me see. Um, geez, losing my train of thought. Um, have a great weekend and I will talk to you all Monday right here on Lockdown Bearcats, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.